Okay, this is the TCAN M1000. Um, to first, to turn it on, the button is here, so just press this button. And then a little green light will light up at the top to tell you that it's turned on. And then to access the software, you log in uh, with your Mac ID. And then the first thing you need to do is to um, get this uh, eye control icon onto your desktop. And to do that, you go to the Start button, uh, go to My Computer, uh, go to the C Drive, um, C Drive Program Files, and then to the TCAN, scroll down to the TCAN uh, folder, open the folder, go into the Eye Control folder, open the 1.9 folder, scroll down until you find the actual uh, icon, it, lo it looks like this, it's this red thing, and then you right click on it and you say um, create shortcut and then just say yes and now it will have created a shortcut on your desktop and this is what you will use to access the software so uh, just double click to open it it's called iControl 1.9 And first thing it'll do is search for the instrument, so you have to make sure that you've turned it on. And then this window will come up, and in order to connect, you click on the uh, instrument name. And if you're planning to use the stacker, which is down here, you would click this, and then you click OK. If you don't need the stacker, then you can leave that box unchecked. And then it will go through this initialization protocol, where it does a bunch of checks to make sure that everything's working properly. Okay, so then once that's done, this window comes up uh, with a, uh, just a bunch of different things that you can already load it in assays that you can click on if you want, if any of these fit what you need to do. Uh, or you can just set up your own assay, so then you cancel out of this. And then this is the window um, that you'll see when, you're, when everything is loaded. So to open and close the, um, the little door where you load your plate are these two here. This one is to move the plate out, that moves the plate out, and you can load your plate. And then to close it, move plate in is here. Um, this is where you designate the, wh which part of the plate you're actually going to use. So if you're going to use, say, the first row, you just click and drag, and whatever is highlighted yellow, the plate reader will actually read those wells. And in terms of measurements, uh, they're all here in actions. Everything is basically here on this side on the left here. And you just, whatever you need to do, you basically just click and drag into this area here. So if you wanted to do an absorbance measurement, click this, drag it into here, and then you set up your um, parameters in here, the wavelength and whatever else information you need to know. If you're doing a fluorescence intensity scan, you take this one, you click it, drag it into this window here. Same thing, it just has all the different parameters that you need to fill in. Um, Normally what you would do for fluorescence intensity is usually you know your excitation and emission and bandwidth is usually something you know. Uh, what I would recommend for um, Z position is that you actually ask the instrument to calculate it from the well so that it can get the optimum Z position for you. So you would just check this here and tell it which well you want to calculate it from. And it's probably best to use a well that's not maybe not the highest fluorescence, not the lowest, but some, somewhere in between so that it will get you the, the right um, uh, Z position. And the same with the gain is another thing I recommend that you actually ask the instrument, this is the first time you do the assay, you ask the instrument to calculate it from the well. And again, you, you choose a well that has an intermediate fluorescence so that it will, it, so that you won't get saturation when you're doing your reads. So that's fluorescence intensity. It, it can do a bunch of other things too. They're all listed here. It also has luminescence capability. 
Um, and then there are some other actions that you can do. If you need a certain temperature set, you can set the temperature there. Uh, so, and it's all the same. You just click and drag down into here and it all just loads up in here. So temperature, shaking is another one that you can do. Um, there's an injector that can also be used and then there are also kinetic cycles. So if you're, say you're doing a fluorescence read over time, you can drag this into here and set up a kinetic cycle. Uh, it's right here. So you basically just tell it the number of cycles that you want. You can also set it for duration in time or number of cycles and tell it which interval you want to use. So how, uh, how often between reads it's going to uh, read for you. And then there's some, some other stuff here which is not usually used. So that's basically it. Once you've got that set up, you can actually, if you're going to come back and do this uh, multiple times, you can actually save this file. So if you want to save it, so you, you go to File, Save As, and it saves it as this TCAN iControl script file, and it's got its own folder where it saves it. So just give it a name that's relevant to you, and then save it. And then uh, when you come back again to make another read, you would just go to File, Open, say file open and then this folder will open and you just choose the file uh, that you want or that you saved previously and it will open it and everything that uh, you had put in there will be there along with the part of the plate that you're reading but you can change that. Uh, the other thing that I neglected to talk about was the actual plate definition files which are up at the very top here so you would uh, there's a drop down men menu here to select the type of plate that you would be using uh, and there are a lot of different plates and it is important to have the right plate definition file so that uh, the, the instrument can do the right read so just make sure you know what type of plate you're using and then just select it from in here and that's pretty much it.